Today, we're going to be looking at the 10 most common errors that you can get in Python, when they will be raised and how we can solve them. Now, knowing how to raise an error in Python, a specific error really demonstrates that you've mastered the concept of that exception. And this is important because one day when you will run into that exception again, you will know exactly how to solve it. And it just makes coding so much more straightforward when you know what an error actually does. So the first error that we're going to cover today is the attribute error. And you'll notice this happening when you're trying to call a method on an object that just does not exist. It's an invalid attribute of that object. For example, pretend you have a number which is going to equal 10. Now pretend we want to append to this number the value of 10. We are calling an attribute that belongs to list, not to number. And if we try to run this, we will get the attribute error because the int object has no attribute of append. And an even easier way to understand this is to create a class, create an instance of that class, and to use a method that doesn't exist from that class, such as dot run. Here I didn't define anything inside the class, so we will get the attribute error that apple object has no attribute run. Number two, assertion error. And this is one of the easiest errors to understand because we are manually creating it. So for example, if we have some Boolean that says has connection, and we're going to set this Boolean to false. But in the program, we want to assert that this connection is true because without the connection, the program shouldn't work. So here we can type in assert has connection. And if there's no connection, we're just going to type in no connection as the error message. So right here, we're asserting that there is a connection, we're trying to make sure that there is an internet connection. And if we run this, we're going to get the assertion error because this has connection boolean failed, it was false, which means that the assertion did not go through and it raised an assertion error. Number three, import error. In Python, you're probably familiar with the concept of installing packages, you type pip install, you can say something such as pillow, and it's going to install that package. And then you can refer to it when you try to import something such as import pillow, or here it would be import pill. And this is fine because we have this package. But what if we try to import something that doesn't exist, such as import subscribe, if we try to use subscribe, we can reference it and we can do some stuff with it such as subscribe append. And that's going to be valid Python code. But when we run this, we're going to get the module not found error, there's no module named subscribe. And most code editors will warn you that you're trying to import something that cannot be found, which is great. But some might not some might just have a squiggly line that says, Hey, there's something suspicious about this import, check it out. And it's probably because you've not imported that module. Number four, syntax error. The syntax error is probably the number one error you will run into when you're starting with Python. It just tells you that you're typing in something that Python cannot itself understand. It's syntax or language that does not belong to Python. For example, if you say x say hello, we're going to get a syntax error because none of this follows the Python coding convention. As you can see here, say is invalid syntax. To fix this, you would have to add an equal sign and you would have to change hello into something that Python can recognize such as a string. And as soon as you run that it will run perfectly fine. Another example of getting a syntax error is, for example, using the print statement and not closing the parentheses. This is a feature that belongs to Python that requires you to use two parentheses to enclose some arguments in a function. Another example would be to create a function without using the colon. You can still do stuff in here, or we can actually just type in pass. But it will give us the syntax error that it expected the colon for that function to be recognized. So insert that colon and you'll get rid of the syntax error. And this is also valid with keywords, you need to make sure that you're naming things correctly, or else Python will not understand what you're trying to do. Number five, type error. A type error is an error that informs us that we're trying to perform some sort of operation that just does not make sense because the types are not compatible. For example, if we print something such as hello plus 10, this is valid code, but this operation is invalid because you cannot concatenate a string with an integer. And if you run this, you'll get the type error because you can only concatenate string with string or int with int. And it's not really concatenation. If you put an int with an int, it's just addition, of course, 
but you need to make sure that you have the correct data types for your function call or you're going to get a type error. If you're enjoying this video so far, please do remember to leave a like. It helps me understand how well the video is doing so I can then make more videos similar to this one or whether I should try working with a different topic. But let's get back to the video. So for error number six, we have index error and this has to do with lists. So if we have a list of numbers, for example, and here we type in one, two, three, and we try to access one of these numbers, let's say at the index of 10, we're going to get an index error because we're trying to access an element that does not exist. It is out of this list, which only has three elements. So the max we can do inside here is try to get the second element. And the same thing goes for tuples and for anything that you can actually grab an item by index. So here, if we try to grab an element at the index of 10, we're going to get another index error. Number seven, name error. A name error is raised when a variable name is not found in the global or the local scope. So for example, if you try to do something such as def do something, and here all you do is say x equals 10, and later on you try to print x, we're going to get a name error because x could not be found in the global scope. It will work inside here, of course, because we have x inside the do something function. But if you have a variable that has not been defined and you try to use it, you're going to get this name error. So we can't just print hello just like that because that name has not been defined. Number eight, recursion error. Suppose you have a function and you try to do some recursion in there. If you end up trying to attempt a recursion without any limits, there is going to be a maximum recursion depth that is associated with your computer, which you might have to increase the limits for. And if you don't, you are going to run into this recursion error as stated down here. Recursion error, maximum recursion depth exceeded. And this is actually quite a nice error because if you do something like this by accident, you might not even notice it. It might just run in the background indefinitely. But with this recursion error, we were able to understand that we did something funky far too fast and it ended up throwing this recursion error. Number nine, indentation error. And this is probably one of the most infamous errors you will have when you get started with Python because you might create a function that says hello and you might say on the next line, print hello. If you try to run this, it's going to give us that indentation error because in Python, you're required to create blocks by indentation. So if you want to show that this actually belongs to the hello function, you need to indent it and put it inside the block. Now you can also add a space if you want. That's a valid form of indentation. Although I highly advise you not to do that so that you can maintain the readability of your code. And for number 10, we have the value error. And I'm going to explain this first by using an import. So I'm going to import math. And here, what we're going to do is print math dot square root of minus 10. Now, if we run this, we're going to get a value error because minus 10 is not a number that can be used with square root. It is an invalid value. So it raised the value error. And this can be fixed by providing a proper value. You can say 10, for example, and you'll get the square root back. But if we change it back to minus 10, we will get that value error because that's not a valid value that can be used with square root. A much more simple example would be to create a number, which is going to be the integer of the string of hello. This is perfectly valid. You can add a string inside that if you want. But as soon as we try to run this code, we're going to get a value error that you cannot type cast a string into an integer even though it was accepted as an argument, since you can put anything you want in there, it was not a value that could be converted into an integer. So those were 10 of the most popular errors that you will encounter when you are coding in Python. I would love to hear other errors that you've encountered throughout your career as a Python programmer in the comment section down below. But with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.